I've seen some really scary stuff on social media, you know, even videos for injecting herbs into the prostate or things like that that are just like not even evidence-based. They're not in the guidelines, but yet, you know, these have a lot of views. So, I mean, if something is being told to you that this is, you know, effective treatment with no side effects, that is, I'm sorry, there is no treatment that has zero risk of side effects. Even the less invasive treatments still have a risk of side effects. So I think, number one, if you're being told that this treatment has no risk of side effects, that that is just not realistic, unfortunately, in 2024 for prostate cancer. Uh, maybe one day we'll get there, uh, but we are not there yet. Um, and, you know, I think some of the best ways to sort through this stuff is, first of all, to figure out who is the source of the information and not to just get your information from one source, you know, cross-referencing different, you know, uh, trusted sources of information. And also, I think just seeing different types of doctors is really important for something like prostate cancer. And most cases are not an emergency. You do not have to get treated in the next week or two weeks even. So, you know, there is time to take your time, talk to different doctors, get different opinions. Uh, and it's so important. You know, for example, you could see a urologist and a radiation oncologist and even a medical oncologist and just hear what everybody has to say about your case. Uh, so there's no rush into this. I think actually it's well worth taking the extra time to make sure that the treatment that you're going to get is the best one for you because we see a lot of treatment regret. That is like people who uh, think back like, ooh, if I knew what this could have been like, I never would have done this. And, and that's really sad, you know, to have that situation. And so Making sure that you are as well informed as possible before you do anything is really key. Yes, that is really good advice. And I think taking your time for something like prostate cancer, and this is not true for every cancer, but for prostate cancer, taking your time and getting the advice of multiple disciplines and different types of doctors is going to be really beneficial um, overall and just making sure that you cross-reference. Like you said, like there's um, very good resources like the CDC and the Mayo Clinic has good content. And um, now on YouTube, they have health verified sources. So just sort of looking for sources that are trustworthy and reliable and and sort of not um, falling into the trap of looking for something that's like sounds amazing, like no side effects, 100% effective is, is really important. Yeah. And, you know, so in addition to some of those for prostate, you know, there's the Prostate Cancer Foundation has, you know, great educational content. In fact, they have a patient guide um, that you can get through their website as well as stuff on YouTube and other social platforms. Um, Zero Prostate Cancer is another great organization. Uh, they have a lot of content as well as support groups that can be very helpful and, you know, support is something that is really important uh, going through this prostate cancer journey. And they have all kinds of support groups for different types of people, as well as partners of patients, because this, this condition can have a lot of impact for the partner as well. And so it's nice that those kinds of resources exist. Um, the Urology Care Foundation is another group um, who has a lot of good content that's trustworthy about prostate cancer. So th there are a lot of good things that are out there. So that's not to say, you know, everything on the Internet is bad. I think the Internet is actually really wonderful for a lot of things about prostate cancer, but you do have to be careful. In terms of people who are newly diagnosed with prostate cancer, are there certain lifestyle modifications that you recommend? Well, really the same things in terms of preventing cancer, you know, so um, eating more plant-based is very important for people who are diagnosed with prostate cancer. We have a new paper coming out showing that the more plant-based you eat after you're uh, treated for prostate cancer, the less... Uh, the better scores you had for erections, urinary control, and bowel function. And so really important still, these dietary factors. So you want to, you know, avoid the meat and dairy and have as much as possible of plant-based food. Physical activity, also really important. 
Uh, so, you know, diet, the uh, physical activity guidelines for Americans are that people should be getting at least 150 minutes per week of moderate intensity physical activity. So that's like, you know, let's say 30 minutes a day, five days a week comes out to 150 minutes a week. Moderate intensity is where you can talk, but you can't really sing. So that's just sort of like a gauge of what the intensity should be like. Now, if you do like more vigorous activity, then you only need 75 minutes a week. So if it's vigorous, this means you can't really easily have a conversation or sing while you're doing this kind of activity. So that would also be, uh, you know, a great option. And then in addition to the aerobic physical activity or the cardio, you also want to be doing resistance training at least twice a week. And so this is uh, really what all Americans should be doing, but very, very important in cancer uh, because there's a lot of very well-established benefits from the physical activity in prostate cancer where it's been shown to increase people's energy and better quality of life uh, during their prostate cancer journey. Um, Another thing to consider is good sleep. Uh, You know, unfortunately, sleep takes a big hit um, after a prostate cancer diagnosis. Uh, We did a big survey about a year ago of patients with prostate cancer, and more than half had poor quality sleep. And actually, about more than two, uh, three quarters of their partners have poor quality sleep. And I think there's a lot going on here, you know. Prostate cancer treatments could affect, you know, sort of urinary patterns. Some patients with prostate cancer take drugs that cause hot flashes. But then, you know, just other things like the um, anxiety of having a cancer and things like that. So a a lot of things can affect sleep, but healthy sleep is also very important for, you know, good quality of life. And so uh, just something not to forget about sleep in there. Are there things that potentially reduce the risk of biochemical recurrence or prostate cancer coming back after you've been treated? Are there things lifestyle-wise that can support that? Yeah, so uh, we have a new paper coming out also uh, with uh, the plant-based diet and showing that consuming more plant-based food reduces the risk of progression of prostate cancer. And this is after people are diagnosed, so it's never too late to improve the diet. Um, There's also been studies from this same um, study population showing that brisk walking uh, may reduce the risk of uh, progression of prostate cancer or high intensity interval training. So, you know, physical activity, very important. So all these same things have, uh, you know, are potentially beneficial in terms of reducing the uh, risk of progression of the cancer. That's really great. That's really encouraging. And you know, guys, if if uh, if being plant based means you have better erections after prostate cancer, I mean, I think that's a pretty good endorsement of well, of dietary change. Yeah, well, it's also associated with better erections in people who don't have prostate cancer. So that was actually the impetus for the study because we published that about two years ago that people who ate more plant based were less likely to get erectile problems. You know to begin with. Uh, However, the prostate cancer population is a bit challenging because, you know, people of surgery or radiation for prostate cancer have some added challenges in terms of erection since those treatments may affect the nerves that are controlling the erection. So above and beyond sort of the problems that contribute to erection issues in the general population, things like, you know, obesity, diabetes, smoking, uh, prostate cancer treatment kind of gives this extra insult. So it was nice to see that even in this population where there's some really additional barriers to good erections, still the dietary pattern was significantly associated with better scores for erections. So I think it's nice, you know, patients ask me all the time, is there anything I can do? And there is something that you can do. And so I like this because I think it's nice to actually have a positive message because, you know, you don't want to feel hopeless uh, we should have we have a lot of hope. There is a lot that you can do to reduce the risk of progression and to have a better quality of life. And so we should do it. Yeah, yeah, I know. And it, you make a good point. So you know, typically you would think that a plant based diet would only affect the blood flow aspects of erections and prostate cancer treatments often affect the nerves to erections. But that is great because a lot of things that we do for people who have blood flow issues don't always work for men who have prostate cancer in terms of treatment. So um, that is really uh, interesting and, and great information. 
Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, I think, you know, I think if this stuff is all tied together, right? You know, I mean, the penis, these blood vessels are very small. You know, the blood vessels in the penis are a smaller diameter than the blood vessels in, you know, the heart or that go to your brain and stuff like that. So that it is a very early indicator. You know, if there's not enough blood flow, it can be the indicator that the, you know, that there's something wrong in terms of the blood flow in the body. And, you know, there's been um, randomized trials, for example, Dean Ornish has published randomized trials of a vegan diet and physical activity to actually, you know, reverse coronary plaque in people with coronary heart disease, Um, you know, and so and that was in, you know, JAMA, one of the leading medical journals many years ago. So if it's possible to actually reduce you know, the plaque in coronary vessels, you know, and also even to, uh, you know, um, to cause remission of diabetes. These kinds of factors are very important in the penis with these very small blood vessels in terms of trying to make sure that you can get as much blood in there as possible. Yeah, absolutely. Um, This is a big question I think a lot of people have. So if they've gone through prostate cancer treatment and now their PSA is undetectable or at the lowest point it's going to be, for example, after radiation, what about starting testosterone replacement therapy? From a cancer standpoint, what are your thoughts? Yeah, so great question. So this is a huge issue of controversy over the years because um, actually even uh, the Nobel Prize uh, many years ago was awarded for this discovery that if you basically uh, you know, uh, do either surgical or chemical castration and reduce somebody's sex hormones to a castrate level, that that is a way to treat advanced prostate cancer. So the thought was if the treatment for advanced prostate cancer is to achieve castrate levels of sex hormones, then is the opposite a problem. So if somebody actually takes testosterone, could they be, you know, increasing their risk of prostate cancer or could it cause the progression of prostate cancer? And so that's been a real uh, big controversy. Now, the current data, thankfully, suggests that people who have low testosterone, that taking testosterone therapy does not increase the risk of prostate cancer. So we published a big study on this out of Sweden. We looked at the entire country of Sweden at everyone who used testosterone prescriptions there, and we linked it with the cancer registry to see who got prostate cancer. And actually, the long-term users of testosterone actually had a lower risk of high grade prostate cancer in the long term. And so we did not find anything that was concerning there. And then even more recently, there was just this big randomized trial of testosterone therapy versus placebo. And again, they did not find um, an increased risk of prostate cancer with testosterone therapy. So I think we could say it's been put to rest that testosterone therapy in people who need it because they have low testosterone that's symptomatic doesn't cause prostate cancer. Now, for somebody who already has prostate cancer, there isn't as much data on what to do because what happens if you have prostate cancer but you do have low testosterone and you're symptomatic, you know, maybe you have low energy, low libido, erection problems, you know, whatever it may be, and can it ever be safe to take testosterone in these people? Um, And, you know, there's different guidelines on this. Some of the guidelines say basically like, you know, there isn't a a lot of long-term data on this, so we don't really know the balance of benefits and harms and talk to your doctor. There are other guidelines that suggest that if the cancer has been treated and there's been an interval of time where there's no evidence that the cancer is recurring, you know, that it is something that can be considered but it requires, you know, a thorough discussion of the risks and benefits with the doctor, you know, because we just truly don't have the long-term data and careful monitoring. So I guess that was a very long answer to say that, yes, testosterone therapy can be considered in people who have been treated for prostate cancer and have gone a period of time where they have no evidence of disease. But just like anybody else, testosterone therapy should only be used in people who actually have a documented low testosterone who are symptomatic. 
And so there is some inappropriate use of testosterone in this country. And so it should not be used in people who haven't had their testosterone level checked. Mm -hmm. And so that's one thing. And especially if they have a history of prostate cancer, because we need to be really sure that that person really needs this. Uh, if we were to even consider this, given the fact that there are potential risks and benefits here.